Previously on Raw Danger. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Welcome back to Nathan Plays Raw Danger. My name is Nathan and this is Raw Danger for the PlayStation 2. In the last episode, we continue the evading capture by the police and uh, making our way along with Aiden Chase, I believe is his name, to find an underground uh, safety area. But then an earthquake began, as you see here. There was also some sort of a man in a coat around the corner there. I thought maybe that was worth checking out. Those glasses and mustache are still amazing. And I will be wearing them for the duration of this episode. Let's go see what that guy was about. Hopefully the shaking stops. And... No, not quite. A man dressed in white is on the ground. I talk to him because I'm worried. Aiden offers to carry him. Up's the daisy. And there we are. Wow. That looks challenging. Up ahead, I found an emergency pack, which of course I equipped immediately. Now this has the uh, benefit of offering even more storage space than before, than just my handbag. And I decided to check just to see if any emergency supplies were left inside of it. But alas, they were not. Looking around the rest of the area, we have some fish tanks there. We have quite a lot of water outside, seemingly. And a suspicious looking bit of fence. Oh, now one of the fish tanks has exploded. Goodness gracious. And I fell over. Still, we're gonna check out that bit of fence. Fence is damaged. It looks like it could be torn down. Interesting. Well, at this point, I got a little bit uh, unsure of how to proceed. And so I ended up backtracking uh, to the stairs where we came in, remembering that there were stairs going up the other side. Aiden is trooping along behind me, carrying the unconscious man on his back. Never complains. Never uh, seems to get exhausted. Up top side, there is a uh, heater there for a save point. I also found a health kit. First aid kit, rather. And uh, you can see there's an item outside. So, of course, we have to go investigate. Now, if you uh, if it feels like the video is a little bit more sluggish while I'm up here, the frame rate is actually slower while I was playing the game. It's a little bit too graphically intense. Over here, we found the Diver Compass, which, of course, I equipped immediately. It's cute. Look at it. Now, uh, again, this is a little bit confusing, but from there, you were able to hop onto the highway and look around, although I did not find much aside from... Uh, this can of herbal soup. So after some aimless wandering around, it was time to head back downstairs with Aiden, hoisting the man around. This time the hint has uh, been changed. And I skipped over it pretty quickly, but it does say perhaps I can break it with something, which is a little more direct than torn down. I checked my inventory, nothing in there seemed to fit the bill. So then it was time to look around for something to break it with. The door inside that fish tank caught my eye, although why there would be a big door in the back of the fish tank seems a little bit unsafe, but there we are. Leads to sort of this uh, maintenance area in which I find, well, of course, some wire cutters. Well, let's just put those to work right away. Of course, I had to take a quick glance around the rest of the room. It's a bit silent hill in here. And try and go 
through the door, which I cannot. I have to go around. I'm not even wearing the sunglasses anymore. That was just silly. Unfortunately, this uh, tiny hand light, uh, lighter seems to be made of limitless fuel and waterproof. Un unfortunately, things are kicking into high gear floodwise, so it's time to get out of this place pronto. I grab the wire cutters out of my inventory, make a nice opening for us to get through. The game immediately advises me that they are no longer needed. I've been tricked by this before, apparently, but I'm just going to follow along and discard them. I've only got so much inventory space. I do lament that whole situation with the crank, the emergency crank that you recall, but nothing for it. Now it's a bit of a sprint to the stairs as uh, water starts coming in in earnest. I had to check back on Aiden to make sure he was following along. I was concerned that I'd lost him, but then he emerges, and all is well. Keep on trucking there, Aiden. Keep on trucking. Though I would like to get a bit of a move on. The situation seems to be worsening by the moment. So if you could just truck a little faster there, bud. And we made it outside. For the pouring rain, we sure seem content to stand around quite a bit. You can't be there. Get over here. Some emergency workers have spotted us. I don't want them to see you. Aiden gallantly volunteers to go talk to them so that I won't get busted again. Is he all right? No, he's still breathing. I found him lying in the tunnel. Okay, leave him here with me. Okay. He's all yours. And there they go, carrying him off. I think everything is safe now. I can thank him, I can apologize, I can tell him he's awesome, or just be very terse and say, let's go. It was a pretty impressive feat of physical strength, so I decided to compliment him. Thank you. Nobody has ever told me that Aw. We should go and check out your brother's apartment. Time to get back on our quest. We're just gonna go on a leisurely stroll. Apparently. Flood watch continues. The flood is spreading. Large portions of the city have been flooded, according to the news crawl there in the corner. The city's west side is beneath water. And the water is threatening the north side. It's using a lot of harsh language and some veiled uh, physical threats as well. The game's also just really dark. Uh, and there's not a whole lot I can seem to do about it. says, that's my brother's apartment. I guess it's the lit up one there. That's supposed to be the clue. I didn't pick up on that while I was playing it, though. And again, if it seems choppy, it's because the frame rate is tanking here a little bit. It's not too bad. It's pretty doable. So I was like, is this his apartment? Because I missed the lit up windows, you see. And it was not. So I'm wasting everyone's time by showing this. Can't even climb over the bushes. What kind of game is this? So we head further down the road. And, uh-oh. Police car. Time to go. I try to run, but a cutscene takes over. This is it. I'm gonna send you to hell. That pesky detective is back, run. and he is definitely going to run. kill me this time. Aiden tells me to run. Hey, you trying to protect her? It's against the law to aid a fugitive. I won't miss this time. Time for you to die. But the earthquake intervenes. And after a hilarious little hop, I am unfortunately struck and killed by a car. Uh, hmm. Okay. 
I guess we'll try that one again. Get a mulligan there. Just the just the best. That's my favorite thing. That little hop. Anyway, try the second. Hey. This time I'm gonna hold on and then run out of the way of the car as the detective is struck by it. Sort of an awkward fashion. Well, let's get out of here. More cars coming my way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Watch that. All right. We're good. I think we made it. Okay. Well, that was something. Aiden is suspiciously calm and weirdly lit. Onwards to the apartment building, I guess. We don't want to stop and collect our thoughts, really reflect on this experience of near death over and over. Just got to keep moving. I accessed the recycle bin, but I couldn't really decide what I wanted to put inside of it. Uh, I think I might have jettisoned one or two items. Here just in case. Police backup may show up. But you never know. I'll meet you there after I know for sure that the coast is clear. My brother's apartment is number 402. It's safe. I don't want to go alone. Do you think he'll come after us? You're the best. Well, yes, I think the police are so busy with the disaster that they don't have time. It's well, it's not so much the police I'm worried about. Go check out his apartment. Okay. It's kind of all the all the collapsing roadways and buildings and things, but anyway, inside we go. Immediately, I spotted some items in that room, although I was a little confused about how to get in there. First, I tried to go around the corner, which yielded uh, no good result. As you'll see, we tried this apartment door, but it was locked. So I backtracked and discovered the, the way into... I suppose these are the manager's quarters. The door is not locked. Let's check it out. Inside, there's a very handy little heater. As well as... A handmade sweater. Oh, looking good. Unfortunately, I am unable to equip it. As you'll discover later, spoiler alert, it's because the game has very strict rules about clothing that is for men and clothing that is for women. And that is a sweater for men. I also found this thermal box... Now, I didn't have a pot or anything at this point, so I was hoping that the thermal box would be something that I could cook food in, but we'll check on catch up to that a little bit later. I foolishly tried to equip the item a second time because I wasn't paying attention to the button prompts. Third time's the charm, and I just picked it up. Harmlessly. Checking this door, and it's a bathroom. So it was time to pause for a moment, warm up, and uh, do a little bit of inventory management. It's always terribly exciting in every video game. Um, I wanted to look at the new uh, thermal box that I had discovered. It's a portable, convenient thermal container that keeps food warm. So, not for cooking so much, but actually for storing a cooked meal for eating hot whenever you want it. So that's nice. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I picked up those documents way back in the police station. Let's check those out. I had set them aside to read at a later time. First we have Crime File. And it really is just six pages of uh, police reports. There's a purse snatcher, uh, some legal workers were deported on October the 17th. And they, uh, there's a gunman arrested there. You know, it's all very exciting. Yeah, somebody actually took the time to, to write this all out. It kind of has nothing to do with the story, as far as I'm aware. It's just a little bit of kind of background lore. The other one is police report. Well, now we have a name, excuse me, for this detective, Detective Richard Trapp. The suspect, Amber Brazil, is emotionally unstable and is not cooperating, it says. I continue to re remain silent, so they haven't gotten a statement from me. They began their initial investigation into the apartment. 
They were able to collect several key items to be used as physical evidence, including the knife that we learned about earlier. Well, that looks pretty bad for me right now. Detective Trap. Huh. Like he's gonna... He's gonna trap me. He's a trapper. I got a little confused about which direction I was going, and then it was off to find the stairs. Because what's the safe thing to do in an earthquake or disastrous situation? Not take the elevator, that's for sure. I don't even live in a high-rise, and I know that. So this takes you straight up to the fourth floor. You don't get to bother with the intervening floors. A bit of a rumble there caused me to drop down. Found another heating pad off to the side. And around the corner at my brother's apartment, there's a little bit of a uh, police caution tape there, along with some neat poles. And that's just the tape, so that's kind of cool. Yellow umbrella! And that, kids, is how I met your mother. Or something. Elsewhere in the apartment, we have another first aid kit that was helpfully left here by somebody. Unfortunately, I cannot carry any more. Well, that's fine, I thought to myself. I remember the recycle bin downstairs. I wasn't sure what to get rid of. And so I headed all the way back down there only to find that uh, I wasn't able to leave the building. Aiden was patiently waiting for me. So I walked all the way back up. I believe I tossed uh, one of the items of food that I had along with me, along with the garbage bag. Uh, it was just a big waste of time. Bathroom's still the bathroom, pretty spacious. Tub is still full. I guess, why wouldn't it be? No one bothered to drain it in the course of their investigation, I suppose. So it's off to the living room, kitchen area. I saw something in the other room there, but unfortunately I got distracted by this thing first. I thought I would go with the closer item, which turned out to be the plot-critical music box. Which I thought I had with me, but I guess I left it here when I was arrested. I can inspect, play, or shake it. I decided to shake it, shake it, like I'm supposed to do. The disguise is amazing. There's a very cryptic note inside of it. Frustrating to poor Amber. And suddenly, it's stolen. Hey, I, I decided to say something completely pointless. Yes, Kate. Guardian God of Water. And then he runs off without a word. Or without another word, rather. He's back. Oh, wait, no, it's Aiden. He was after the piece of paper I found. He ran away. What? I think. Woo! A whole bunch of options here. He's with a detective. He worked with my brother. Crime syndicate taxi driver? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go with the first and most obvious one. I don't know how he would be a fan of my brother. I think He's that's the probably the wrongest brother. possible answer. What? You think he killed your brother? By the way. What did it say on that piece of paper? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, something about the God of Cascade and... Ooh. Don't get this wrong, Nathan. Don't get this wrong. Uh, water. Something yeah. Something about the Guardian God of Water. The Guardian God of Water and Cascade. Oh. I know. It... Well. It's maybe it's kind of a reach, cascade. but... Need a car. I guess we have nowhere else to be. Off to the Cascade Dam. Okay, let's go. So we head downstairs to the parking lot to take her brother's car. I guess he won't be needing it anymore. And we drive on out of there. Flood watch. Flood spreading. Large portions of the city flooded. Yes, this we can tell. City's west side, beneath water, completely. 
Water threatening north side. I think that's more or less the same as the last update, actually. It's now uh, quarter after two in the morning on day two. The car, being a piece of junk, makes it about halfway across the city and then suddenly dies. It's not going to start. Are there any other cars around here? Perhaps. Let's go find them. Too much water in the engine or something. So we have options to go look for a car. I'm an empowered 21st century female, and so I decide that uh, we're going to work together. I'm not just going to make him go off and do it. Well, I mean, I'm personally not a... You know what I mean. Character. Okay. Role-playing. I'll look over there. Oh, yeah, this looks a little familiar. There's a 909 there, and um, that looks like perhaps Angelina, the restaurant from Chapter 1. Still lit up. Remains to be seen. I don't remember the timeline from Chapter 1, so it remains to be seen if I've been there already with uh, Joshua. First, I got completely sidetracked and went entirely the wrong direction to check out these intriguing-looking planks over here. Because I'm just the sort of person who loves to poke around nook and s nooks and crannies. And it does not always pay off. Sometimes a plank over a giant hole is just a plank over a giant hole. Anyway, back on track. I was heading toward Angelina. When a cutscene triggered. I can say, what's going on? Or good evening, or ignore her. I decide to do the polite thing. She seems unperturbed by the flooding. Why worry her? Have you seen this person? Well, the picture's a little small, but I think that's actually the guy that we helped out earlier. He was on the ground unconscious in the tunnel ahead. What? Really? Yes, he was taken by the rescue team. Thank you so much. I'll go and check with them. And off she goes. Well, hopefully that will uh, pay off in a future chapter. We'll see, I guess. That seems like one of those interactions that kind of changes things for later. I decided to look around her apartment building a little bit. Spotted something on the ground. It is a leopard jacket. Looking sharp. We we will probably take that disguise off in the next episode. It is getting a little bit silly. Well, there is a parkade here, so we may have some luck with some of these vehicles. First one I try belongs to the restaurant. And there may be a key inside. Well, that's worth checking out. Let's head upstairs. It's pretty much the way we left it. And as bright as it is inside, I decided that it was probably not necessary to keep the lighter on. Although, again, its fire is limitless. It's magical, I suppose. Maybe that's the secret all along. Yeah, everything else is more or less where it was. The kitchen area here still has the warm-up spot that I remember from last time. Also, there was that pot here that I never picked up. Although, I don't know if that would have changed anything if I had picked it up. Interesting. I wonder. So I threw out one of my foods to make room for it. And then used it to cook something for my new thermal box. It's a brand new option here. When you select to eat, you can eat by yourself or you can put into thermal box. So I did.
Back here we have a storage area with a bunch of random bits of uh, food lying about, if, in case I was low on those, but I think I'm good for now. The food honestly doesn't seem super useful. It gives you a bit of a temporary heat boost, but it, on, it, like from what we've both seen, you and I playing this, it doesn't last for very long, and so you're carrying around, you're wasting valuable inventory space on minuscule gains. Perhaps on harder difficulties it becomes much more of a thing. I decided to check the bathrooms and confirmed that yes, I must have been here already because that cool jacket is gone. However, going around the corner here, wait no, here, there's a new feature. Somebody else is in the restaurant. Oh boy. I can again insist that these are my boyfriend's handcuffs, but I'm just gonna. Please don't call the police. Please believe me. I didn't kill my brother. Brother was working for NorCal Pharmaceutical, right? How did you know? Oh. Well, I'm a reporter. You didn't do it. And someone clearly wanted him dead. Well. <laughs> You know what your brother's responsibilities were at NorCal? I'm still impressed that he knew that. He was with the R&D department. I don't know what he did. I just decided to pick the really specific answer there. One thing is I actually have no idea what he did. Me, personally, as a player, but... David. Amber knows. I found a car key in the cash register. I bet it belongs to the car downstairs. Huh. Who is he? He's a news reporter. A news reporter? You're going to write an article about her, aren't you? She's not a Um. Woman. No, I'm not going to write a story about her. Aiden. Aiden, thank you, but it's okay. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah, you don't need to be my white knight right now, buddy. Oh, you were with Mayor Just... Goldstein at the celebration. Correct. Scale it down. I am Mayor Goldstein's secretary. Oh, I wondered about that. Yes, uh, Aiden turns out to have been working for the mayor. I thought we saw him briefly in Chapter 1, but I'm not sure how he ended up out here helping us. I will understand. I see. Well, let's go. I'll be waiting for you in the parking lot downstairs. So maybe that'll be uh, something we'll fill in later on. Anyway, we're done talking to the reporter for now, who seems like he's on to something involving this whole disaster. Hopefully we'll check in with him in, at, a, at a later time. And with that, I decided it was time to uh, call it a video, and so I headed back to the save point, warmed up, and hit the save button. Next time, I guess we'll get in the company car and see where we can get to from there, try to get to the Cascade Dam and solve the mystery of what the heck is even going on. In the meantime, thank you ever so much for watching, and as always, we'll see you next mission.